I'd love to move to Mr. Philip Ziedi, actually uh, owner, founder of Growth Holdings. Uh, uh, I don't know if you could tell us a little bit about your initiative also in terms of, uh, I know you're very, uh, your last initiative in terms of talent pool and trying to think of that way, you know, uh, that heartbreaking problem we have in Lebanon in terms of youth unemployment. And uh, this is where actually he stepped in and I think he's making a big difference. Yes, we believe in investing in uh, human capital and human talent. But let me tell you, let me start by telling you who I am, really. I want to tell everybody. I am finally, with all my experience in Lebanon, I became a farmer. A real farmer. I know you like farming. A farmer, what does a farmer do? You plant the seed. Then you cultivate the seed, right, to produce fruit. That's what we do. So what, we, what I'm doing is we're planting the seed of hope, the seed of inspiration, the seed of what's possible, what can be possible for the youth in Lebanon. We're cultivating that seed by implementing programs and initiatives, and most importantly, by creating opportunity. And I can tell you the fruit we will bear is success, and added value from the Lebanese people to the world. So I want to invite everyone to become a farmer. Whoever that does, is not afraid to get their hands dirty, let's plant the seed, the seed of hope, and cultivate so we can show the world what we can do. So we basically, if I want to summarize what we're doing, we're, we're really uh, investing in our people for them to stay in Lebanon. And what we do is we take out projects and, and we have partnerships with world-class companies like Tesla and Airbnb and we're developing uh, communities with them and we're developing also technology. So what we do, we break down these projects into tasks, smaller tasks, and we give every task a budget of how much is going to cost us in the U.S. Then we take that budget and we deduct from it the profit we want to make, okay? And then we develop courses that we sent to the Lebanese universities. We gave these courses to the teachers and now they teach the students the courses. Once they finish, they get a certification and now they can work on our projects. When they do the project, execute, develop, test it, and deliver it. Once it's approved, we wire the money to the university. And that money goes to, as a credit towards the student's tuition and to the teacher. By doing that, we are empowering the youth. And uh, youth empowerment for us brings with it innovative thinking, uh, brings with it vision, enthusiasm and terrific creativity. So we're benefiting from it. And this is what we need to look at. We need to see how can we gainfully employ our youth. Gainfully, we need to make money. If we do not make money, our ecosystem will not survive, will not be sustainable. So we need to gainfully employ them. It doesn't matter how much money we send them. It doesn't matter how much real estate we buy. It doesn't matter how much money we deposit in the bank. If we do not create a viable opportunity that is based on a formula that creates perpetual value for both the donor and the receiver, it will not survive. And that's what I want to invite every expat and immigrant, successful businessman, to see how we're making money in Lebanon. No, we c you can invest and you can we're making money today. We're, benefit from, we're benefiting from it, as well as the country. And you're creating the basis for the future uh, for these international companies to see us, to see that we are, we are very advanced in all these technologies, and we have the talent to support that. As well, what I want to say about, we, because this panel is about bilateral trade, and I want to see, I want to tell you the way I see it. I see it as it's a tunnel between the U.S. and Lebanon, but that tunnel 
we can send through that tunnel the opportunity, the technology, and the know-how for the Lebanese youth. But then I don't see it just a tunnel back to the US. I can see it a tunnel back to the world. We can be that economic pipeline between Lebanon and the world. And that's what we need to look at. We need to also think of strategically. You know, Lebanon today has, has no national strategy about sustainable development, nor a national economic plan, nor a poverty reduction strategy. We have nothing. It's on us. It's on us as expats to do what we're trying to do. And what we're doing is independent of the economy. It's independent of the politics. It's directly between us and the universities and dealing with the students. And that gives them a lot of hope. Thank you.